everybody. Today I'm going to share with you how I insulated my van. It's a little bit different than probably most people have done theirs. I, I haven't seen anybody else that has done theirs like mine, but I wanted to keep the, the ribs and not put up walls or um, contiguous walls anyway, because I wanted to be able to use my ribs. Uh, I hang different things from there. And um, so I, what I did was I got four by eight foam boards and I cut them to fit in between the ribs. And we'll show you that inside in a moment. And I did most of the van up in Wyoming while we were there this summer and uh, sitting at my friend's house. And uh, today I left a few panels just so I could show you how to do it or how I did it. And um, a lot of people thought that this might not work, but it has worked beautifully for me. Last year without insulation, when I first started out in this van, I would wake up and I would have droplets on the ceiling and some of them would even crystallize. So I, I joked that I was living in an icicle igloo. And then also, um, you're not gonna be able to see it on camera, but I got a, I have a scar on my finger because I went to sleep with my head behind my head and it was on the metal of the van and that and it got so hot that it, it blistered and i have a scar so this insulation and the way i did it and used the fabric that my friend tracy sent me and you'll see that in a minute we're going to slice that in the video is um it, i just love it it may it makes it so girly for me and it allows me to keep the ribs uh that i wanted to have exposed so basically once you cut the foam board to fit you wrap it in fabric it's that easy you want the foil side down so that this is against the ceiling uh, that makes for your vapor barrier and we learned that it's best if you use a very heavy duty adhesive to put these on the wall and the ceiling because other Otherwise it starts coming down and we saved uh, that and you'll get to see us how we put up a, one of these boards today and my friend Robert is going to do that because it, it just I, I'm no good at it so he's going to do it. Um, I put one inch thick on the ceiling and three quarters inch on the walls and um, right now what these are going to be is on either side of my fan just small seg segments so that's what the finished product looks like Ta -da. and once you, you cut it uh, to size like these are cut already and ready to go actually that's switched so those are cut and ready to go and I glue it first on this side, get it nice and flat. And you can see it still shows some of the imperfections. Um, I'm not worried about that. It, it's so pretty once it all goes up, it doesn't matter to me. So you get it all glued on that side. And I learned that you, if you do the, again, the heavy duty 300 weight or more for this, um, that works best. I have one panel where it's kind of loose, um, but it, it still looks good, but I didn't use a heavy duty enough adhesive. So this is just Loctite spray adhesive. Shake it really well. I learned that the hard way or it bubbles up. And I spray it straight on the foam. And the other thing I learned, let me go ahead and get that going. You have to let it sit and get tacky. And I am not the most patient person. I'm not a foo-foo person. I, I kind of miss that gene in the lineup. So I, I got to where I would try to tack it down too fast and, and uh, ended up having to redo a few of them. So I hope you learn from my mistake on that. You can touch it and, and if it's still wet, you gotta wait. So that's probably the biggest key for me that I learned on that. So we'll show you some pictures while that one's drying and then come back. All right, so now it's tacky. Uh, it just, it, it doesn't stick. I mean, it doesn't come off on your finger. It's sticky, like when you touch glue, which it is, and you'll get all yucky, but it's worth it. So you pull this up as tight as you can, like you're gift wrapping, basically. And over in the middle is what I did. Press it out, press it out. See? Ta-da! And again, just like gift wrapping, we're gonna do the same thing on this corner and on that corner. And we wait, fold it over, and then we'll be ready to put all of these on the ceiling. So I hope that shows you how I did it. Basically, you're going to gift wrap your foam board. 
and it's that easy. I just love it. I'm, I'm so glad this, this worked because it's really what I wanted to do. So that's how you prepare the material on the foam board to put it in the van to serve as insulation. And now we're in my van and Robert's going to demonstrate how to use that adhesive gun to put the panels up. And uh, we have one that we did, didn't use the right glue on and so it's come down and so we're going to demonstrate on a big board that we had done previously and then one on this new that I just did. I hope that makes sense. I, it works, trust me. I may not be explaining it very good, but it works. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to put the panels up onto the van using a heavy-duty adhesive. Um, today we're using Liquid Nails Construction Adhesive, a heavy-duty version of it. Um, it's, just, it's just applied using a cock gun. Uh, these are inexpensive. You can get them for a few dollars at Home Depot or any hardware store. This panel here that we're going to fix is, has fallen down. Part, part of it came undone. Um, and the, the mistake we made with these panels, with a couple of these panels, the first tube of adhesive we used was a lighter duty. And it did okay on some of the panels, but those that had curves were kind of problematic. And they, they didn't hold very good. Um, it does take a little bit for the adhesive to set. So if you have the option of finding something that sets fast and is still heavy duty, that's what you want to go with because it'll be easier. Uh, otherwise, you either have to use screws to hold it until it sets or use uh, what we did in here actually was use bungee cords because we left the ribs exposed. Uh, so we were able to do that. Um, or like up here, we can put a towel or something to hold it in place till it sets good. Uh, when I did some similar things in my trailer, um, I was going to put wallboard paneling over it, but I glued the adhesive into the, on the ceiling, I had to glue the adhesive in because I wasn't able to screw it in there. And what I used there was like poles to hold it in place. So the more the curve and the thicker the insulation, the longer, the more resistance it'll have wanting to come down. So you need to make sure you plan for that when you put it up, otherwise you'll be frustrated because it'll be falling down on you. So what you'll see us do here, we'll probably use some towels to hold this up after I put it, the adhesive up again, and we'll use probably bungee cords to hold these in place until they set. And it could take anywhere from half an hour or an hour, depending on the material you're using and on what you're bonding to. And one of the reasons we did it this way in this van was because Deborah wanted to keep her, not only did she want to lose space by putting in framing and new walls, which would have lost a few inches, which is a big deal in a space as small as a van, but she also liked being able to have the metal ribs for stick magnets on and magnetic hooks and to be able to use some of the holes for bungees. So technically she might have got a little better uh, insulation effect by covering everything, but this has made a massive difference So and it still worked really well. So it's a viable option, especially if you travel with the seasons. Um, if you're wintering in North Dakota, for example, or summering in Texas, maybe you want to go with a full-blown, full insulation. But for a lot of cases, this is going to work real nicely for you if you're traveling with the seasons anyway. So we'll start with this one, and I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, because of the way the position I have to get into but we're going to do this one first and then we'll go ahead and do these couple here around the fans these are the only four we have left is around the fans okay so here we go Okay, so we got this panel fixed now. Um, you can see we just shoved a bag under this side and a blanket under this side to hold, just to hold it in place for a little while until the adhesive has a chance to set and then Deborah will take that down later. Um, so now we'll go ahead and get started on these ones here. We got two different panels and they're almost the same size but it's always a good idea to do a dry fit before you go ahead and put them in place because yeah, it's kind of like that old carpenter's thing about measure twice and cut once. Uh, so it's just a good idea to check before you put them in. Otherwise, if you start with a smaller one, it'll fit on either one, and then you'll be in a pinch when you get to the other one. So. Okay, 
This one's only going to fit here, so I'll put that in that way. And I don't know how well you can, if you can see, but there's the, in these vans, there's like two sets of ribs. There's a smaller set on the inside, or shallower set, and then there's another set of ribs going the other direction. So we're leaving the ones, these exposed, but we're gluing the material to, the foam board and the material to these ones that are inside. That allows us to still have some air space in there, uh, but it's it's glued up and it leaves the ribs, other ribs exposed for Deborah. So. so you just go ahead and squirt this on here. You want to hold the nozzle fairly firm against the ribs when you're gluing so that the glue sticks, otherwise it'll want to just fall down on the floor. So stick it on and be, don't be skimpy with the glue when you're putting it on. You want to be kind of generous with it. If you don't have enough glue, it'll. If you don't have enough glue, it'll tend to want to fall down more easily. So, and then once it's up, you just push this into place, and then either sit there and hold it, or use some bungee cords like we're gonna do. <laughs> I can't reach you. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I Will that work? You want another one? Yeah. There you, oh, let me get it to you better. There you go, Robert. <laughs> these cute little bungee cords are handy for lots of stuff, not besides hanging up insulation. And I have a million of them. And Deborah has a lot because they're so useful. And I affectionately call Deborah the bungee cord queen because I've never seen anybody that can use bungee cords in so <laughs> many creative ways, but it works for her. And that name actually came up at the summer RTR. I was camped next to Deborah there, I looked over one day and she hung up her hummingbird feeder from a ponderosa pine using a bungee cord. <laughs> and her van was also wrapped, we'll show you the picture here, her van was wrapped in Reflectix that was held on with it, yeah. bungee cords at that time because she hadn't had a chance to get it insulated yet. Yeah. And that she had to do that to keep the heat sort of under control because it was hitting 90 degrees in Flagstaff with a really intense sun. Yeah, that was it. That was van insulation version one. Right. <laughs> You're going to get a good picture of that here in a minute. <laughs> You'll get a good laugh at about that. So yeah, bungees come in handy even when you're uh, living like that. <laughs> they are very, very useful, very versatile little tools. So. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and put the other one up now. <coughs> you need me to turn a fan on, Robert? Ah, that's right. She's asking about a fan. It's not a bad idea to have decent ventilation when you're working with any kind of adhesives um, just because of the fumes they can give off. Actually, I forgot to open that vent. You can open it. That'll help. Yeah, sorry about that. I should have, I should have thought of that sooner. <laughs> All right. And that just presses right up in like so. I'm going to throw these at you. You ready? Right. <laughs> so we're sort of making this look easy with the bungee cords because we've done this before. But if you haven't, it's a good idea to also have your check your bungee cords or your poles you're going to use to hold the material in place till it sets before you actually put the glue on and put the material up. Okay, so that's how it's done. It's, it's really very simple. Uh, and, and if you're not looking to do a major construction project with, or if you need to conserve space, uh, this is a viable way to get some decent insulation benefit without having to spend a lot of money on framing material and lose precious inches and and uh, you know get into work with some power tools and other things to to mount them to the ribs. So this this can be a way for you to do it and it can be attractive. You can do it. You see some of the fabric Deborah's used, uh, her friend that her friend sent to her. But you can do it with any kind of fabric you want or or uh, any kind of material you want to wrap them depending how you want it to look. So. Okay, so hi. Thank you.
you Michael for doing this videotape um, and um, what I'm about to do is open a box from uh, that was shipped to me from my friend Tracy because she spent a day in the fabric market at in LA getting this material for me so that I can cover the insulation that my friend Robert is going to help me put up in my van and it's going to be so pretty and I haven't seen it yet I'm opening it now and so here we go Let's see what we got. Oh my goodness, this looks white, but it's not. Oh my gosh, it's like red leather. That is gonna be so cool. Check this out. Oh my gosh. So here's one thing that Tracy got me. I love you, Tracy Beeler. Look at this, look at that. Is that not fabulous? That's awesome. That is awesome. And then this looks green open it up oh Tracy and I wish I could feel this fabric it is so fine how pretty is that gonna be of course you don't have my bedspread out here to see what it looks like but it's all gonna go so beautifully <gasps> and then mix this in look at that look at that look at that she knows me so well so well so my van is gonna be fantabulous oh my gosh there's so much more there's so much more. I can't believe you shipped all this to me, Tracy. I love you. Look at this. So we're going to put this over here. Oh, my gosh. And this is all fuzzy, furry, pretty. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Okay, i got to keep going because we're taping this. Tracy Peeler. OMG. That's the surprise you told me about. That is beautiful. I can't wait to talk to you about this, sweetheart. I love you. Okay, so there's that. And here's the last piece. Oh. So, am I not blessed? I love this. Thank you. Okay, if you find in your van or a truck, whatever you're working with, that you just can't get the panels to stick good enough, uh, or you don't have enough ribs to work with or whatever, another option is you can screw these panels on. You can still use the adhesive backing if you want for extra hold, but you can also put just put screws in them and use a, a either a decorative washer or just flat washers. You can even paint with spray paint if you want to make them a certain color. And you can just put those along every so often. And that'll hold up. Those fan, these panels are very light, so it doesn't take a whole lot to hold them in place. So I hope that helps, and now you have another idea of how you can insulate your van or camper. So there you have it. That's how I insulated my van and it has made all the difference in the world. It got down to the 30s last night and I didn't even have to hang my heater and turn it on. And that is such a world of difference from last year. And so once again, as you can tell from what Robert did in putting up the insulation for me and then being able to borrow uh, and, and his uh, uh, at, while we were at his daughter's I was able to set up in their barn and get everything cut it was just so wonderful it's always team Deborah my friend Tracy sent me the material and my beautiful Turan and someone even donated money for me to get some insulation and it was an anonymous donation uh, they gave it to Bob Wells and, and he gave it to me and, and kept his word that he would keep them anonymous. So I don't know who you were, but thank you. I suspect that it was a little bit because of how uh, my van looked with my silver insulation. I looked like I was in an oven instead of being insulated at the summer RTR because that's where somebody gave him the money to give to for me to insulate my van. That or they were parked near me and got tired of being blinded when the sun hit all that silver. Regardless, I am, I'm so blessed and uh, my van is insulated. It's my home and every day it just gets better and better. Life is good out here. I say that all the time and I mean it. We'll see you down the road, everybody. Like that editor? <laughs> You're gonna kill me for that, Robert. <laughs>